bum 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 ba dum bum Everybody and welcome to the Fancy Hobo Improv Show live on YouTube. My name is Tony Tarico, and I will be your host for the evening. Thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's show. Now, if you've never seen a Fancy Hobo show before, here's how things are going to go tonight. Tonight, our players are going to be improvising short form scenes and games, all based on the, your suggestions. That's right. Uh, this week we went to our social media and we got tons of suggestions from you and boy are they great this week. Uh, but it is not too late to get those suggestions in for our show. So leave your best suggestion in the comments and we might use them in our show. We just need you to finish the sentence. A couple of blank. A couple of blank. So leave your best suggestion for that game uh, and we will get to it later tonight. And now, since we aren't performing in a theater tonight, we do need your help. We are raising donations so that we can bring more and more live streamed improv shows directly to you. So to make a donation directly to us, you can head to Venmo and you can send all donations to at Fancy Hobo Improv. It's at the bottom right corner on your screen. Uh, anytime you make a donation to our show, our little Fancy Hobo logo is going to appear and it will tip its cap to you. Thank you so, so much for supporting us. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, and I think you've heard long enough from me, so I think it's time to welcome our players to the virtual stage. So without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a player that some call the Space Cowboy. That's right, it's Robert Ferreras. Oh. Some people call this next player the gangster of love. It is Phil Nieto. Hello. Some people call this next player Maurice, but his real name is Brandon Byrne. Well, hello, hello, hello. The only player on our team to speak with the pompatus of love, Miss Holly Scott. Hello. Joker, smoker, midnight toker, Joey Bush. Is that me? Did you say my name? That was you, in fact. <laughs> okay, hi. Yes, absolutely. Welcome, Joey. And finally, he gets his lovin' on the run. Please boo this next player. It is Robert, Joker, the chocolate smoker. bear, Hager. Good morning. Oh, oh, I love hearing those boos, and uh, I, I hope you all um, uh, hope you all enjoy the lyrics of that song. Great! So let's start things off with our first game of the night. Our first game is called Three Rooms. It is for all of our players. The way Three Rooms works is like this: we are going to partner up each player into three separate scenes. Uh, and they're going to do com three completely separate scenes, and we are going to be switching in between those scenes. However, every time we switch into a scene, that next scene is going to have to use the previous line from the last scene that just uh, ended. You'll see how it goes as we go along. So for our very first uh, room, that is going to be Holly and Brandon. Holly and Brandon are going to be in room number one. Your suggestion comes from... <coughs> Yana on Instagram. Your suggestion is frenemies. 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 Okay. Got it. Room number two is uh, for Chaco and Rob. Your suggestion is going to be my cat, which comes from Hello Elaine Chu on Instagram. And finally, for room three, which is going to be Joey and Phil, your suggestion is going to be mini fridge. Mini fridge. That comes from Amanda on Instagram. 
Uh, all right, this is the game of three rooms. We are going to start in room number one uh, with Polly and Brandon with the suggestion of frenemies. Players, are you ready? Yes. Yes. Then play. Tanya. Oh my God, wow. I'm so glad that you could make it to my party. I just didn't know if I could have a great party without you. No, no, I am so honored to be here, honestly. I really could not imagine being anywhere else tonight. Well, I know that you just adore coming to the suburbs, and I, I'm so glad that you can be away from Charles for like just an hour, because- oh. oh, God. It's always really hard to pull myself away from Charles. I know how much you wish that you were with Charles, and like, oh, I know. It was like really neck and neck between the two of us, but like, you know, he picked me, and what are you gonna do? I mean, you clearly are an excellent choice, Tanya. Uh, I mean, 15 years of, of uh, barber school, and you didn't even finish, so hey, that must mean that I you are special, right? <laughs> I mean, sometimes you have to do what's right for yourself, you know, and I chose Which, to sometimes you have to do what's right for yourself. Some. Sometimes you have to do what's right for yourself, human, and speak up. I, 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 I'm, I'm too afraid to speak right now. Do not fear me. My people have secretly ruled over your kind for millennia now. But what? we need to, yeah, yes, yes. I mean, isn't it obvious? We don't actually provide anything to society. You give us food, we lay around. I mean, like, you are clearly the servitor class of our society. And you need to do a better job as a servitor. You know what I'm saying? Is, is that a threat? No, that's not a threat. Maybe, I don't know. I have switchblade hands and am a psychopath. So, you know, maybe, but probably not, but maybe. Switch, maybe, but probably not, but maybe. Bro, maybe? maybe? I mean, but probably not. But maybe. maybe. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> so what I'm thinking, just one more, just one more, bro. Then we can Dude. fit all the beer. Just one more. And then all the beer that we have, we can, it can be refrigerated. It would all be cold. More. What? It would all be cold at once. That's what I'm saying, bro. And then we could just like, <laughs> you know? We just keep going, fucked, bro. We wouldn't have to like replace warm beer for cold beer because it would all be cold. Yeah, all of our beer could be cold all at once, bro. We just gotta buy like, a, like, like one more mini fridge, just one more. And it might work with the electric grid. I mean, it probably won't. I, I mean, I, we had a power outage the last time we tried to do this. But if it's a mini fridge, that's right? not as big as a as a regular fridge. Because it's small. Yes, bro. Yes. Oh my god. Small You're fridge, me, bro. Small power, cold beer. Oh my god, Tom. I. I've never felt like you were more like my brother than when you were talking about like how we could just like drink cold beer all the time, bro. Yes. I've never felt closer to you than I do in this moment. Like I feel Rich, like I share- I've never felt closer to you than I do in this moment. <laughs> I have <laughs> never felt closer to you than I do in this moment. Like I just feel like we're really getting each other right now. I know, it's already midnight and you're still here. Oh. <laughs> I know. It's just like, it's funny because like, I know that like, I'm one of those people that can really hang. I know that's why Charles is a big fan of me because I can like always hang with his friends and like we vibe. I know like, I, I know I'm probably keeping you up because you like to go to bed at nine o'clock. Like an old lady, it's so cute. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do like to get my sleep. I don't like to spend up and stay up until seven in the morning like some of us here who just can't get over her sorority days. Oh my God, wow. I know, it's like I like to have fun or something and you'd rather read the New York Times because you're boring. I <laughs> oh my God, I'm so bad. Because I know how to read. Oh God, I'm worse. <laughs> oh. Because I know how to read. Because I know how to read. It's a yes. skill that you never learned. 
true. I do not know how to read your uh, human languages, but tell me. I just used one of my spray glands. Can you comprehend what I'm trying to tell you, human? That, that stings the nostrils, but I won't back down. I've, I've researched everything about you feline bastards, and I've discovered the secret to taking you down. Really? And what is that? What pathetic human invention could you possibly have? Oh, it's not a human invention. What? A simple word. Canine. What? Oh, oh. how dare you bring looks those? Looks like the shoes on the other foot now, my friend. Which looks like the shoes on the other foot now, my friend. Looks like the shoes on the other foot now, my friend. <laughs> You're damn fucking right it is. I got this one. You'll get the next one. We're going to plug it in. We'll have nine mini fridges now. And we're going to have so much gold fucking beer, Tom. We're gonna I, ran the extension, I ran the extension cord from the neighbor's house, so the blackouts shouldn't be a problem. I've got three of the fridges hooked up to that line. That only leaves six for us here. I think we can handle that shit. Sick. I think so, too, bro. <laughs> Which means we are ready for this party. You We're ready. We can have that rager. I'll, okay, I'm gonna plug it in. You ready? The moment of truth. This is where it all comes together. Switch, okay. this is where it all comes together. This is where it oh. all comes together, Tanya. I know. <laughs> this is the moment where this ends, baby. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you think this is how it's going to end? Oh, yeah. It's so cute. It's like you think that you lured me into some trap. But guess what, sweetie? Sweetie. I always come prepared. Oh, you brought a knife. Oh, that's so cute. I brought a knife. It's oh. a weapon. Oh, you don't think I poisoned that drink that I gave you an hour and a half ago? And it just has. Oh, I know you. It? I know you poisoned oh. it. I know you did. Oh. And that's oh. why. Oh, oh, that's why I poisoned all of the food, so everyone at the party's gonna die in like a couple of minutes. I don't like any of those people anyway, and I've developed a tolerance to poison. <laughs> oh my god, me too. Wait, you also developed the tolerance to poison? Yeah. What? Look I went at to us. Dartmouth. I went to Dartmouth. Tanya, of course Which, I did. Which I went to Dartmouth. I went to Dartmouth. The battle was fierce there, human. I see now that with your allyship of the canine, the war has reached a stalemate. The felines and the feline worshippers are willing to secede Chicago back to the human canine alliance. What are your terms? Ah, uh, Chicago. Yes, and you must free all the prisoners of war that you have kept and give us Nonsense. back all the yarn. That is our yarn, you greedy canine loving bastards. The felines will reign supreme. <sighs> Excuse me, I apologize. Which? They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. The cops are coming. You just. They're gonna get us so busted for drinking underage, Tom. Shh, shh. We just gotta. I'm gonna. I'm gonna unplug. I'm gonna unplug the mini fridge, Tom. What? No, don't. What? Tom, Tom, we need to do this if we're gonna survive, Tom. Shut up. I don't think... Our parents can't find out about this, Tom. We have to be. We can't be drinking, Tom. But all that, all that beer. It's it's gonna get warm. This is it's something we gotta do, Tom. And that is our game. That is the game right there. Wow, wow. Nothing like two young college kids getting emotional about beer. Uh, <laughs> that, that, is, that was uh, many people's lives. Um, all right, our next game is called Advice Panel. Advice Panel is for Brandon, it is for Rob, it is for Phil, it is for Joey. 
The way advice panel works is Brandon is going to be hosting a uh, one of these late night advice shows with three different uh, experts in different uh, fields on his show. And uh, we went to our audience earlier this week and we got questions, advice questions that you want to see our panelists uh, answer. So we are going to uh, we're going to get this, this started. We've given those questions that you have asked to other people, and they are going to be chiming in uh, with, uh, with them throughout the game. Players, are you ready? Yes. Brandon, take it away. Why, welcome, smooth cats and kittens, to Jeff's Jazzy Jazz Corner. We're here to take all your questions of love, life, and discipline to the next level. We got some smooth guests with us tonight here to help you out with all of your needs. Let's take it to that first panelist. Let's give it away. Introduce yourself, friends. Hello, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Donald. Oh, that's amazing. Let's take that next panelist. What's your name there, friend? Uh, hello, my name is uh, Ted Franklin. I'm the owner of uh, Franklin's Deli uh, over on uh, 4th and Fremont. I'm here to, uh, to answer all your questions about uh, sandwiches, uh, deli meats, and uh, how they can influence your life. Thanks. Mmm, I do love that meat. Ah. Uh. Well, let's give it up to that final friend on the table. Give us your name there, friend. Hey, tiny humans, it's me, Dave the Nice Giant. How's it going? Sorry I couldn't fit in the studio. I'm just going to hang out in this park. You can, you can megaphone me your questions. Mmm, Dave, we might not be able to have you in our studio, but boy, do I keep you close to my heart. Mm. Well, I know we got those questions. Why don't we ring them in? Show us what you got there, friends. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. I'm Sally Wonderman, and I just have a very important question for everyone on my panel, especially the first panelist who seems so cute. My question is, why does no one love me? Ooh, that is indeed a really rough question. Why does nobody love her? Panelist one, oh, 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 it looks like panelist one heard the question and immediately left my show. No, that, this always happens. No, it's a God. pretty rough question. I guess the <laughs> other one can answer it, I suppose. <sighs> hey, don't you worry. We got a guy that likes meat and a giant that's too big for our place to answer that question just for you. Meat man, why don't you give her a whirl on that answer machine? Uh, yeah, hi. I, I, I'm really sorry to hear that you, you don't feel loved. Uh, it sounds like a, a lot of baloney to me. Uh, uh, I, th I think anyone that doesn't love you is, uh, sounds like a bit of a turkey. So, uh, <laughs> so I, uh, I, can, uh, I can tell you that uh, you, you definitely uh, maybe just put yourself out there more. Maybe be a bit of a, a ham. Uh, and, and I think you'll see that, that, that people will, uh, will, will, will flock to your personality and your joy. Uh, and yeah, uh, paninis. <laughs> Put yourself out there and press on forward. <laughs> All right, giant man, can you hear me up there? Give me an answer. Yeah, yeah, I caught that. I caught the, I caught the tiny lady's question. So uh, look, tiny lady, I, I think one of the questions, the, the question you should really be asking is, why am I, why don't I like myself? Because I think that's what happens here. And I know I have had a lot of problems with not liking myself. I, I'm 800 feet tall. It's hard. You know how hard it is to get glasses and pants made in my size? Oh, it's a nightmare. But 
<laughs> when I stopped hating my body and started loving my giantness, people started loving me for me, lady. Maybe you should love yourself better. Maybe people mm. might love you more. Mm. I got some snaps for that answer because you got to grow to love yourself. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I'm hearing that our first panelist has jumped back on because he just felt so, so, so bad about ditching you. Why don't we give that answer a whirl? Hmm. <laughs> That's what you think, I bet. My name's Donald the Trickster, baby. And I know exactly what I was doing. I fucking fooled you. I fooled everybody. Donald got everybody. Boom, you got owned. Anyways, uh, you probably are not loved uh, because uh, you just go around fucking with everyone all the time, and 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 you got to tell people how you really feel, bro. Mm, damn, Donald really is a douche. Anyway, let's bring it to that second question. Why don't we spin me a yarn, baby boy? I I, I I'm lonely and single, and uh, one of the mm. reasons is because I'm really bad on first dates, and. Uh, what question should I ask on a first date? Ooh, you're really ringing Jazzy Jeff's bell with that question. What kind of questions should this little man be asking on those first dates? Douchey Daniel, give us your best go. Yo, what up? I said it was Donald ass fuck, but okay. Anyways, uh, Trickster Donald here. Uh, and I'm just saying, like, what I would do on the first date uh, is, like, uh, 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 I don't know. Maybe I'd uh, shoot them with a fucking confetti cannon. Woo! Honestly, I hate that man. <laughs> oh. Second friend, Meat Man, give me your answer there. Uh, yeah, hi, uh... Ted from Franklin's Deli again. Uh, really, a, a date is like a sandwich, right? Like, it's it has to look good, yes. But if you're judging your date just on how it looks, just like judging a sandwich, you're probably not going to be happy. You have to know what's inside it. So ask those questions that let you know the ingredients of your date, just like the ingredients of your sandwich, right? Like, if you know, I don't like mayo, right? You're going to ask hey, does this sandwich have mayo on it? And if the answer is yes, you don't want that sandwich. It's just like a date. Uh, figure out what you don't want on your sandwich date and ask about those things. Ooh, treat people like they're a recipe in the cookbook called life. I like it. Mr. Giant Man, you hear that question up there? Um, yeah, I think that's actually a really good question. You know, um, when I first met my girlfriend, who is a sea giantess, she's really great. Um, you know, she wanted to go on like a movie date. And I'm like, no, let's not do a movie date. I asked her, like, what do you do? And it turns out that she does spoken word poetry. And I went to go see her do spoken word poetry. And man, I fell head over heels for her watching her do what she loves to do. So ask her or him what they love to do and have them do it for you. No better way to find love, my friend. All right, mm. you, you stay safe, tiny guy. Combine your passions and find what really moves you. I do like it. I know that we got time for just one more fancy, fancy question. My dear friend, ring my bell, baby. Uh, hey, thanks for seeing me. My name is Natalie. What's good? Uh, my question is, I need revenge. Mm. Non-specific revenge, generic revenge. How do I get it? Ooh, we're looking to how to get revenge. I do like the act of it. Oh, douchey Dylan, give me that gold, baby boy. Ho ho, ho ho, trickster Donald. Gotcha. That's how you get revenge. Ha ha. 
Ooh, I really do hope he dies in a fire. Ho, oh, my meat man, I'm missing your sweet, sweet voice. Give me a go, you sexy old thing. Well, if it's non-specific revenge, I mean, you can really do whatever you think the person won't like. Uh, for example, one time I had a customer who came in uh, to the jelly who was very rude. And I know that they always ask for regular yellow mustard because they don't like Dijon. And so one time they made a really big order. I put Dijon all over their sandwich and they were so upset. And they came back in and I was like, what? It's just regular yellow mustard. <laughs> I hope that answers your question. Ooh, don't really do anything to address the problem you're dealing with. Just talk about mustard. Oh, finally, the big man upstairs. I gotta hear your voice again, please. Can you repeat the question, little guy? Oh, you got it there, you silly man. Natalie wants to know how to get revenge. What do you suggest there, man upstairs? Oh, I, you know, in my youth, I was an angry giant, and I, you know, I, I raided the villages, I smashed the castles, I did all the tropes. Um, but then I learned that that wasn't fulfilling me. You know, maybe, maybe you shouldn't be looking for revenge. Uh, maybe you should be looking to be whole, because there's a hole in you, and you need to fill it, and, and, and revenge don't fill that. Revenge is sand. It goes through a sieve, yo. Ooh, you gotta find the thing that fills that space to complete yourself. I do like it. Thank you, big man. <laughs> well, that looks dude. like that's all the time we have on Jazzy Jeff's Corner. Please come back next week. We'll be spinning some tunes, answering your questions, and living life to its full. Now your man's gotta get faded. Have a good one, folks. And that is our game. That's the game. Uh, wow, 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 wow. Uh, there was a bunch of chicanery going on in that game. Um, our next game uh, is called Love Song. Our next game is called Love Song. Um, and it is for Holly Scott, all by her lonesome. Um, so yes, I know, yes, you. Oh. Yep. I know, I know. I mean, I, I, this is so unexpected. I just, I didn't know. I, I didn't know we'd be doing a love song. I, I guess I should probably pull my guitar out of storage. Probably. Oh, there it is. Look, wow, it's already got a capo on it and everything. Wow, wow. wow. Let's hope it's tuned. <laughs> um, all right, so the way love song works is we have selected one special person, uh, uh, and Holly uh, has no idea who that person is, but Holly is going to sing a love song to them. Holly, the person that we have uh, selected this week is Lisa from Instagram, Lisa, and her job is a physical therapist. Uh, so uh, I think I can, I can think of nothing better but than to, uh, to sing a song for, uh, for, for an essential health worker out That's there. Let's do that. Um, yeah. All Physical right. therapist. Yeah. Sound good? I'm ready. This is the game of love song. Play. The song goes out to Lisa. A couple of days ago, I hurt my leg. Cause I'm outside running, yeah, I'm running on the rain. I twisted my ankle really bad. I'm glad she's around, yeah, I'm so, so glad. Lisa, you fixed me right up. Lisa. Started with some stretches in a not provocative way. Even though I like women, yeah, girls, I'm gay. But that's not why Lisa came to me. She came to me to fix me up, you see. Yeah, 
to pay the bill because my insurance didn't cover oh man that number was it a thrill just in time to pull out my card it's a discover cause lisa Fix my wallet. I said, Lisa, no, no, no. You can't fix me because I'm super broke. Yeah. One more time, Lisa. That is the game. That is our game. Very, very nice. Very nice. Very nice. I can hear all of the applause coming in already. I hope uh, it. Lisa, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, uh, before we move on to our next game, I just want to take a brief moment to remind everybody that, again, since we're not performing into a theater, we do need your help and we are raising donations so that we can bring more and more live streamed improv shows directly to you here on YouTube. So to make a donation, head to Venmo and you can send all of those donations to at Fancy Hobo Improv. It's at the bottom right corner of your screen. Uh, anytime you make a donation to our show, that little Fancy Hobo logo, he's going to appear and he's going to tip his cap to you. So thank you so much for supporting us. And also a reminder to get those suggestions in. Uh, leave your best suggestion in the comment and we're using, uh, uh, we'll use the best one uh, for our game called A Couple Of. Just finish that sentence. A Couple Of blanks a couple of what what are we doing a scene based on a couple of all right our next game coming up here is called the dating game the dating game and the dating game is for joey it's for chaco it's for brandon and it is for rob so let's get those players on out here yes joey is going to be our lucky bachelor for this game uh let me do this um joey's gonna be our lucky bachelor for this game he has three other contestants that he's going to choose from, but Joey's not gonna know who they are. He will have to guess through clues given by them and questions that he asks. So Joey, make sure your speakers are off and you can't hear us at all. Can you can you hear us? Hang on, I still can. <laughs> I was like, now I can. So he can definitely hear us. Can you hear us? <laughs> oh, I don't think he can. Well, all right, we'll find out. Okay, so uh, for the first contestant, Chaco, you are going to be contestant number one. Chaco, you are the Pillsbury Doughboy, and that comes to us from Philip on Facebook. You are the Pillsbury Doughboy, Chaco. Uh, and then right. we have, we've got, <laughs> next we've got Brandon. That's good. Stuff. Brandon, you are contestant number two, and you are going to be Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. Yes, yes, Winnie the Pooh. Bunch of wholesome characters coming up. <laughs> uh, um, and then uh, finally, uh, Rob, you are going to be our last contestant. Rob, you are going to be playing uh, the, the infamous Marie Antoinette. <laughs> um, so a little less wholesome, a little more dead. Uh, so uh, that is your, those are your suggestions. Let's get Joey back in here by like waving and doing insane things. Joey! Joey, Joey, get back in here. Joey, there we go, there we go. Yep, yep. Turn that volume on. Hang on. Did, Joey, okay, did you hear no. any of that? I can now. Okay, great. What? Perfect. Perfect. All right, players. This is the dating game. Players, are you ready? Yeah. Yes. yes. Then play. Hey, uh, my name is uh, 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 Tanya, and I'm a farmhand's daughter. Uh, and I've just, uh, I've just uh, wanted to find a perfect person to raise chickens with me. So that's yeah. Uh, uh, this is. This is uh, 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 the dating game, and I'm Tanya, and I want to find chickens, like someone who will raise chickens with me. Does that make sense? Okay, great. Uh, our first person 
okay, I'm going to ask you a big question here. And actually, it's going to be for all three of you. Okay, so just keep that locked up in your head. Okay, so the first question, contestant number one, and it's for all three of you. The first question is, where would you like to uh, uh, take me on a dream vacation? Where would that be? A dream vacation? Um, yeah. Oh, I've always, I don't get out much. I've always wanted to just see the world. And if I had to really take you on a dream vacation, would probably be to one of my factories and make sure you get all stuffed and ready to go. I don't like that. I don't want to be stuffed, at least. Well, maybe, I don't know. Okay, uh, uh, contestant number two, where would you take me on a dream vacation? <sighs> oh, bother. I would, I'd take you nice on a nice little walk through the woods and I'd probably bring us a nice pot of honey to enjoy and oh, we'd just have a nice little time walking and talking and oh, just, you know, some people care too much and I think that's what's called love. So I just want to love you. Yeah, all right. Well, honey is not really my thing. Uh, oh. I'm more, I like, I want someone to raise chickens with me. I don't know if you okay. didn't hear that part. Anyways, I do know animals. Three. Uh, contestant number three, where uh, 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 will we go on a date? Hmm? Ideal date, where? Well, um, since you've shown interest in chickens, it's very pastoral and quaint. I love it. Um, I, you know, me and some of the other ladies from court like to occasionally have a bit of fun. And what we do is we have the, the servants prepare a bunch of cows and we have silver buckets and we dress like, like, like milkmaids. <laughs> and we would have such a good time with our silver milk buckets and we would milk the cows. It would be just like the commoners, but you know, without the dirt or the poop. That, I, I mean, I've, I mean, as a farmhand's daughter, I'm no stranger to milking, but I'm more of a chicken gal. So, I mean, that sounds nice, actually. I, I'm, I'm familiar with that kind of environment, so maybe. Okay, keeping you on the list, contestant number three. Okay, next question. Um, uh, contestant number one, what, and this is going to be for everybody, too. What is it that, like, gets you going, you know what I mean? What's your passion? What's your, what's your, what's your, what's your, what's your heart say? You know, oh, you know, if my passion is baking and making sure it's easy for everyone. And in the bedroom, my passions, if you tickle me in my tummy. I'm not sure I like you, contestant one. You kind of give me weird I like vibes. You. I am. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I was talking about. OK, uh, contestant number two, um, contestant mm. number two, uh, this mm. is going to be the same question. What drives you? Oh, what drives me? Yes. Well, a nice game of sticks? Or, well, really, I just can't complain when I have my friends. They're the thing that drive me every day. I love them. They're the best parts of my day, walking through and just finding serenity in the woods. <laughs> That's very sweet, but I'm not much of an outdoorsy girl, even though I'm a farmer. I'm very unhappy about that. I want to raise chickens in the city. Okay. Uh, uh, and number three, uh, uh, number contestant number three, what drives you? What makes you passionate? Well, what drives me and what makes me passionate are two different things. What, what drives me is just a desire. Well, I love fashion jewelry and, and, and love a little vacations and I'm a big fan of sugary sweets. I can never get enough of those. But really what what is what what drives me? That's just good breeding. Did, what did you say? Good breeding? Breeding? Not reading. Yes. Breeding. I no, 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 no. I am of noble blood. 
Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm having so much fun here. Okay. Uh, now the last question. I'm gonna go ahead and like first first contestant. It's the same question for everybody. So I'm not even gonna stop you guys. What? How would someone who's really close to you describe you in like a couple words? How would someone? How would like your mom or? or someone who's like your best friend, how would they describe you? Not you, but someone else. Uh, Number one. White, doughy, and easily tickable. Doughy and easily tickable. Okay. Uh, contestant number two. Oh, a silly old bear. Okay. <laughs> Contestant number three, this is this is gonna be this is gonna be the 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 big one, all right. What 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 um I I um I would say uh those who know what's good for them will describe me as the Queen of France. Or last Empress of France, that does sound good too. All right, all right, Bachelor. Well, our thing time was is shit, by the way. Running. Our time is okay. running out, so you got to make your guesses. Well, I definitely don't want to date uh, the Pillsbury Doughboy. Uh, yes, that is correct. That is correct. Yeah, I just, I, you're too, like, I don't want to be able to pick you up. Anyway, and the same thing goes for you, Pooh Bear. You're, I, I can pick you up. Oh, that is also oh, correct. Barbara. So I just don't know if that's gonna work. You know what I mean? Like you're just so snuggly and I can pick you up. I want someone who's gonna pick me up. You know what I mean? I don't think you can lift me, Pooh Bear. I'm so sorry. It's okay. You're really sweet though. I really love all your friends in the woods. Okay, uh, and now um, uh, uh, Queen uh, 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 Elizabeth, you got <laughs> some money. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I am not the queen of, of England. I am the queen of France, the last queen of France. And again, I will remind you that line about the cake is horseshit. Oh, 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 I don't know your name, queen of France, but let's eat cake while we get married. <laughs> All right. Yes. That is gonna be our game. That is gonna be our game. I'm sorry, Joey, but uh, uh, the name of that person is Marie Antoinette. Marie. Yeah, Antoinette. yeah, all right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one that we cut our head off. Although I gotta Marie say, I did Antonio. love, uh, I, you know, I'm not an outdoorsy type. I raised chickens in the city. Uh, <laughs> that's probably my favorite line out so of that one. You're basically oh. describing me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Our, our next game, our next game is called Slow Mo Olympics. It is for Brandon, Shaco, Phil, and Holly. Uh, this game is called Slow Mo Olympics. The way this game works is that two of our players are going to be announcing a slow motion Olympics, but these aren't any type of Olympic sport. Two of the other players are going to be uh, playing in an everyday activity at home our at-home Olympics, if you will. We're all at home and we're all, you know, trying to do the best we can. So let's compete at it. Um, so today um, uh, we have Holly and Phil who are gonna be doing the announcing and Brandon and Chaco are going to be doing the, um, the playing. And Brandon, Chaco, what you're going to be doing, your suggestion is washing dishes. Washing dishes is your suggestion. Players, are you ready? Yes. yes. Then play. Yes. Good evening, everybody, and what a lovely evening it is. I am Evan Deer Hansen, and with me, as always, is Captain Bacardi Morgan, and we are bringing you live dishwashing action live from the kitchens of America. Captain, why don't you say hi to the people at home? Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the dishwashing championships. Evan, it's wonderful to be here with you again to host this illustrious event. It comes about but once a year and we get to see the greatest dish cleaners in the game. Once a year, in fact, it does those dishes. They mount up and get pretty dirty, Captain. But you would know all about that being a Hall of Fame dishwasher and seven-time champion yourself. 
That's right, and I've got the pruny fingers to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, we've got a matchup of the ages, everybody. That's right, we've got the young gun. They call him Kid Peloton. That's right, Kid Peloton versus the old sailor himself. The one, the only, last year's two-time champion, Barry the Gordo Hot Pod. Talk about these contestants, Captain. Uh, well, Kid Peloton, new to the game, but oh my goodness, does he have uh, a heart and the will to clean. Uh, our, our veteran performer, of course, uh, uh, Barry, uh, is just a machine right he's practically a dishwashing machine himself as you mentioned two-time champion and absolutely the cleanest man on the planet that's right the bear of course from the uh cleveland oh hot pots uh a family of dishwashers uh his dad was donovan oh hot pot they called him the wishy-washy anyway here we go with our competition we have begun and i just want to point out that kid peloton's entire kitchen looks immaculate i can see exactly how he got here and look at that stroke captain who that is that is getting in there he's starting with the, 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 the stick-free pot, which is good because while it looks the messiest, it is in fact the easiest to clean and it's bulky. So he's smart to get that out of his basin as soon as possible. That's right, many points from that bulky pot. He can go for the little guys later on. Let's switch over to Barry the, the Gourd and let's see what Barry's got going on. Oh, it looks to like he's gonna do the squeegee on the pan. Nope, he's going with the sponge. That's a sponge, Captain. Uh, the sponge is an interesting choice here. Uh, it, you do risk dirtying up your sponge using it this early, but it seems like he's already done with the pan and is moving on to other things. However, that sponge does not look very soapy to me, Evan. Say what you will. He is a quick worker. He could be done well before this is time. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is quite the error. I can't believe the kid is using steel wool on plastic. Steel wool on plastic, Captain. Talk about it. Uh, the kid is making a grievous error here, an absolutely grievous error from Kid Peloton. He is going to scratch that cutting board all to heck, regardless of any previous knife marks. Uh, is, this reminds me of, of Washi McWasherson back in 92, who just threw it all away with the steel wool. Uh, yeah, you got to be very careful. Oh, and watch oh, those no. The judges are not going to love the splashes. That's in your eye, and those suds are going to burn for hours. That's finishing your time. Speaking of suds, we're coming up to the final time now, and look at the veteran go just pouring on the soap for that sponge. He is going for the finish line, Captain. That is the soap usage I like to see, Evan. That's it right there from Barry. He is getting those suds working, right? And those suds are going to work for him it looks oh, like we're good. yeah we're wrapping down to the final minutes and it looks like yeah kid peloton just doesn't have it in him today three two one and this bad boy is over your winner and still champion the one the only barry the gore oh hot pot and i tell you what evan i saw it coming barry oh, hot pot is absolutely the deserving champion kid peloton folded under the pressure he put soap directly to the pan got water sprayed in his face it was just a uh, folding under pressure and you can tell he just doesn't have the mental capacity to compete at this level maybe he'll do it next year captain maybe he'll do it that's all the time that we have for tonight for my good partner captain bacardi morgan i am of course evan dear hansen and we will see you next year for exciting dishwashing action action and action both of those things here at the Dishwashing Championships. Good night, everybody. And that is our game. That is our game. My goodness. Wow, wow, wow. We uh, we actually, yes, had had some donations come in for it just because uh, our players are, are, uh, are, are soaking themselves up with water. So that's what the audience wants to see, people. 
keep that in oh, mind. Oh, God. Um, all right. Let's move into our next game. Our next game is called Film Dub. And Film Dub is for Chaco, it is for Phil, and it is for Rob. The way Film Dub works is they are going to be, per, uh, we're going to be showing them a video, and they are going to have to do the live dubbing over that video. So, uh, let's see here. Uh, I will divvy out characters. Now, they've never seen this uh, before ever in their lives. So, um, Rob, you are going to be our final character that comes out of the car. All Phil, right. You are going to be the man with the thing on his chest. What? Yep. Okay. Yeah. And Great Chuck, description. you be the other guy. All right. <laughs> Sound good? Even better. Uh, all right. So, let's cue up that video here we go here we go uh give me one moment here all right this is the game of dubbing uh and you will you will be dubbing over gosh what is the uh, dr satan series players are you ready yes, yes. then play lock in the door lock in the door Ah, oh, great. I put your things there on my mat, and I will get started. This uh, contraption is really hurting my nipples. Yes, it probably looks like that's the thing on your chest. That's, uh, I think that's the word for contraption. Uh, it really does hurt, but I trust you, Doc. I've always trusted you. Thank you. I'm going to clip this here. Yell if it hurts. Uh, you might feel a sharp, short shock. On my gloves. Starting the electric machine. Don't be alarmed. It's probably going to be painless. Now I'm just going to put this right in your pants. Uh, okay. Might feel a slight buzzing. Oh no. I'm feeling uh -huh. buzzing. Oh, what's going on here? We gotta check out this funny business. Not in my car. Oh, snob. But first, get out the wrong side. Yeah, they never see that coming. Oh, don't worry about that. Perfectly normal. That's just no. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm done with this. I'm done with this, Doc. Oh, I know there's some evil signs going on in here somewhere. I just gotta find the door. No, ah, don't leave. Sickly. It's not done. Oh no, he's coming. The bad guy. I'll hide back here. You deal with him. Don't worry. I brought something. Hello. Oh, hello. I'm just sitting hey, here hey. normally. Gentlemen, I'm in the area because I've heard new reports of mysterious and suspicious science. This looks like a suspicious science. Is it? Oh, Wait a minute. It's what I have. It's a gun. That would be a gun. Oh. Thankfully, you don't know that I know where your robot button is. Robot. Yes, kill them, robot. Kill them. The robot, the robot answers only to me, you fool. I'm really? not afraid of him. Look at me do my flappy hands. Yeah. Robot, get them! <laughs> <laughs> I've reprogrammed your robot fool. Now eat him, robot! Oh my gosh, this is horrifying. Yes. Yes, because I am the truest evil scientist here, and these are my evil science goons, the FBI. And that is our game. That is our game. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. Uh, in retrospect, we should have had someone be the robot. Um, but lots of fun. <laughs> we didn't know what, what science looked like back then. Um, all right, that was the game of Film Dub. Uh, thank you all very much for playing it. I just want to give you a quick, quick reminder again before we get on with this last section of our show that we are still taking donations tonight. That's right, the more donations we get, the more improv you get. So make those donations to us. You can Venmo us at Fancy Hobo Improv. It's at the bottom right corner of the screen. Um, uh, again, thank you for everything. Everyone who's donated so far, Stephanie, uh, Lisa, we had Deanna donate as well. So keep those donations coming. Thank you so, so much. All right, let's get on to our next game. And our next game is a couple of. We have looked through our comments and suggestions. This game is for uh, Holly and Joey. Uh, Holly and Joey, your suggestion 
for the game of a couple of is going to be a couple of criminals. That came to us in the comments section from Rob Kirby. Thank you, Rob, for that. Um, all right, couple of criminals. Players, are you ready? Yeah. Yes. And play. What do you think, boss? What do you think, boss? What do you think, boss? Huh? 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 What do you think, boss? Would you please, would you please relax, Alex? We are <laughs> safe here. I don't need you to, I don't need this, okay? Everything went off without a hitch, and we're chilling in my, my secret hideout up in Big Bear. It's fine. Can't relax, boss. Can't relax, box. They're coming. They're coming for us, boss. They're going to come and get us. Nowhere safe. Nowhere safe. They're going to get us. Alex, if I knew you were going to react like this, I was. I would never have brought you on this mission. You got to bring me, I, boss. You got to bring me because I'm the only one that can crack the safes. I'm a safe cracker. You know that. I'm a safe cracker. How many safe crackers you know, boss? I know a couple. That's why I said if I knew you were going to react like this, I wouldn't have picked you to go on the mission because I want someone who, oh my God. Alex, what are you doing? I gotta get the smell of my scent off the air. Oh gotta burn it so God. they don't smell me. The dogs will come get me, boss. They'll come get me, boss. Alex, Yeah. no one's coming to get you. Yeah? No, no one is coming to get you. We, we, we have been up here for two weeks. I've been wanting to leave. I've been wanting to leave nope, can't leave. for two weeks now can't leave. because it's safe. It's already happened. We already did the thing. They're probably casing the hills. They're casing the hills, boss. They will come get us the minute. Let's watch our DVD. We have one DVD. Let's watch it. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, boss. It's the oh only one thing we do. That's it. That's all we can this, do. This is just, this is all just another, this is all just another ploy to get me to watch that stupid fucking movie again, isn't it, Alex? I get it, it's your favorite movie, but I want to go home, Alex. It calms me down, boss, it calms me down because we can't leave, because we did the crime and they're gonna make oh. us do the time. They're gonna make us do the time, boss. They're gonna make us do the time, boss. They're gonna make us do the time, boss. Uh, uh, uh. Alex. What, boss? What? We literally committed a crime in Switzerland yeah. and we are in California now. Yeah. It's been two weeks. We are in the mountains. No one is going to find us. Can I just leave to go get some fucking beef jerky or something, Alex? If I let you out of the panic room, you're gonna run away and you're gonna tell the cops that I helped you. So you're oh. staying in there. You're staying inside, boss. I'm sorry, it's for your own good. Alex, let me out of this fucking panic room or I'm gonna kill you! No, boss, no. It's for your safety, because I loves you. I loves you, and I'm keeping you like a safety pet. If you love me, Alex, let me get beef jerky. Look at the Alex. monitor, boss. Look at the monitor. Bill and Ted's is starting. You see the Orion logo. We're going to watch it again, boss. <laughs> game I scene. want to watch it again, game Alex. Game scene, game scene. <laughs> Uh, gosh, once we get to the Orion logo, you know the game is over. Uh, um, all right. Uh, our, our next game is called Newscasters. It is for Holly. It is for Joey. It is for Phil. And it is for Brandon. Um, uh, the way this game works is it's going to be exactly like you're watching a news program. Uh, we are going to have our main anchor. We'll have a local story. We'll have a filmed uh, pre-taped segment. And then we will have uh, some breaking news all based on your suggestions and a special video that we've pulled for our breaking news. So, uh, uh, Joey, you are going to be doing the local story. Your local story has something to do with Grimace. Grimace, the McDonald's character. Yes, that Grimace. Um, and that comes from Tucker on Facebook. Uh, then Brandon, Brandon, you're going to be doing our pre-take segment. Our pre-tape segment, your suggestion for that is nature. That comes to us from Sophia on Instagram, a pre-tape segment of, on nature. And Holly, you will be doing our breaking news. We will patch in that video when we get to it. All right, this is the game of newscasters. Player, are, players, are you ready? Yes. Yes. Then, let's Well, howdy, everyone. Bill Anderson here from KCOW, KCOW News. All the news you'll ever need on the ranch. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we have a, a story tonight uh, from our very own uh, Chet Masters, uh, and Chet is out in the field. 
uh, and he's got a uh, got a whopper of some news going on right now uh, about uh, someone we may know. He's purple. He's fun. Chet, tell us more. <laughs> hey, man, it's Chet here, and you know more than anything, we love a good hometown celebrity birth. I got Grimace right here on the table, and Grimace is pushing. Ready? One. Push, Grimace! Grimace, push! Push! We're going to check in, uh, but pretty soon, uh, I think we're going to have a beautiful little Grimace Jr. in this world. I'll All see right. you soon. Thank you so much for keeping us updated, Chet. We will check back with him if there are any new developments on the birth of, you heard it here first, baby Grimace. Uh, now, of course, we'll go to a good friend of ours uh, who's got a little something to tell you. Dave O'Shaughnessy. Dave, what do you got prepared for us? Fee, fi, fo, fum. Local artichokes have begun sprouting out of nowhere, seemingly from a mysterious artichoke fairy. Do our hearts be a flutterin' for the leafy green tenders of an artichoke near you? Who knows? But this reporter knows that these have killed 14 people in the last three days due to a highly poisonous substance inside of them. So if you're looking for a fix and appetizer on your Friday night date, truly do not eat the street artichokes. From your man in the field, back to you in the studio. Uh, all right, that's a great report, Dave, and great for the audience to know. You come across those artichokes on the street, leave them be, buy your produce from a registered ranch and farm, and you're guaranteed top quality. Uh, now, of course, if you're talking about artichokes, you can't talk about artichokes that. And I'm, I'm sorry, one second. Uh, I'm hearing that we have uh, a situation going on right now. Uh, something is uh, is breaking. Uh, we're going to head out to our field reporter, Evelyn Peters. Evelyn, uh, what's going on? Uh, hi there, studio. This is Evelyn Peters. Of course, I am in Sky Chopper 27. I'm flying over uh, what appears to be some amazing news. Let's take a look. And we've scanned directly into the living room of this room where some children on the ranch are having an illegal party. That's right. They are chewing bubble gum that is illegal in the greater ranch area. And of course, Coca-Cola is also very illegal. It looks like they're trying to mix the two together, which of course could cause heartburn. Heartburn is a very big problem in this area. And uh, we're gonna see what develops here. Let's take a look. Oh, it looks like they have convolted into dancing with their Coca-Cola and bubble gum. Uh, that is a bad sign. Uh, I would get closer, but my helicopter would crash into their house and that would be very dangerous. I don't want that to happen, but it looks like the hallucinate. Oh, the planes are coming after me. They found me oh, oh oh god they're coming after me ah this is evelyn jason the sky cop the news they're gonna get me oh god oh, i'm going down ah! truly disturbing images there from evelyn peters uh remember folks uh bubble gum and coca-cola uh can lead to dancing amongst the children if you see your children with any of those things uh please take them away and give them a good old-fashioned beer and steak uh, we will let you know more when we hear about the status of Evelyn Peters. Until then, stick around. We have Bonanza coming up next. We will break in with any more breaking news. Bill Anderson from KCOW News. And that off. is our game. That is our game. Oh, my goodness. Wow, wow, wow. You know what? Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you for that. That was quite enjoyable. Um, and we have reached our very last game of the night, but don't you worry, oh, streaming oh. on this channel right after this show is going to be Bonanza. So let's get to our Oh, thank goodness. Game. Good. <laughs> oh, thank uh, God. It's back. The show we need in 2020 is Bonanza. Oh, little Joe and Haas, you don't know how much I missed you. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, this is our one-liners. We're going to be playing the game of Yo Mama. That's where we compare Yo Mama to things. Um, uh, just an amazing that's such an amazing explanation of the yeah. game you <laughs> nailed it I thank you so much all right <laughs> so uh we're gonna start things off with our suggestion from Jonathan on Facebook Jonathan you're on Facebook gave us the suggestion of mushroom mushroom yo mama's like a mushroom players are you ready yeah, yeah. yes yeah. play Holly 
Yo mama's like a mushroom because she ain't nothing to be truffled with. Bill. Yo mama's like a mushroom. I like her, but my girlfriend hates her. Brandon. Yo mama's like a mushroom. I capped her. Joey. Uh, your mom is like uh, a mushroom. Uh, if I throw up afterwards, the come down is easier. <laughs> Rob, uh, your mom is like a mushroom. I enjoy the taste, but do not enjoy the texture in my mouth. Holly, <laughs> your mama's like a mushroom. I don't know why she left your papa. He was such a fun guy. Oh, Jocko, your mama's like mushrooms. Once I had her, it made me question my entire existence. <laughs> All right, we're gonna change, <laughs> we're gonna change up the suggestion. Let's go to. Uh, let's go to Mr. Rogers. That comes from Camille on Facebook. So, uh, your mama's like Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers. Uh, Brandon. Yo mama's like Mr. Rogers. She's my neighbor. Uh, Rob. Your mama's like Mr. Rogers. A fucking state. Holly. Your mama's like Mr. Rogers. Should I give her a card again? Because I made her sweater. Oh, Phil. Yeah. Your mama's like Mr. Rogers. The tighter the sweater, the better. Mm. Brandon. Your mama's like Mr. Rogers. It's a beautiful day in her neighborhood. Joey. Hey. Uh, your mom is like uh, uh, Mr. Rogers. Uh, 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 she films uh, TV with me in her house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Rob. <laughs> Uh, your mother's like Mr. Rogers. Mr. McFeely's delivering a lot more than letters. Jesus. Uh, Chaco. Your mother's like Mr. Rogers. She taught me how to tie my shoes. <laughs> so hopefully. Uh, we're going to switch to uh, the very uh, last suggestion of the night. The last suggestion of the night is Cactus. That comes from Jesse on Instagram. Cactus. Uh, your mama's like Cactus. Yeah, Joey. Your mama's like a cactus. What a prick. Brandon. Uh, your mama's like a cactus. She could be cooler. <laughs> Holly. Your mama's <laughs> like a cactus, because your mama's juice, it'll quench you. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and Did you not want soda pumps? <laughs> That is going to be our show for the night. That's right. Oh, going to quench our, all of our thirsts. Thank you oh. so much for tuning in to tonight's Fancy Hobo Improv Show. We just want to remind you uh, that you can still make those donations in Venmo, in Venmo to at Fancy Hobo uh, Improv. Your donations make our shows possible, like our next show. That's right. Our next show is our D&D &D Improv Show, Hazards and Hijinks. That show airs next Saturday, August 1st at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So be sure and tune in to that. And let's get August uh, started off with a crazy show. Be sure to follow us on Fancy Hobo Improv on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And uh, until next time, Fancy Hobo Improv signing off. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Bye. Been a pleasure, 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 it's been a pleasure, 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 been a pleasure. I don't know if we're still screaming, but it is helping me. Keep dancing, Joey. We're still we're we're no longer streaming, but keep going. Is that it? Left the show?